The Hall of Fame in any sport is something every kid dreams of being inducted into one day. And obviously it's a very prestigious career accomplishment. But in the NBA, it's kind of lost a lot of its weight. A lot of people do agree that the NBA Hall of Fame is kind of a joke. So here today, I'm telling you how I personally would fix the NBA Hall of Fame. Now, the first step would be removing some guys from the Hall of Fame. Now, is this realistic? Absolutely not. Who's going to be the guy who goes up and tells somebody, hey, I know we thought you were good a little while ago, but we thought about it a little more, and we just don't think you're Hall of Fame material anymore? It's absolutely not going to be me. But in my perfect world, uh, here are some guys who I just don't think are Hall of Fame material. Now, in order for me to reconsider your Hall of Fame candidacy, you've got to play at least most of your career past 1970. So I'm not ashamed to admit, I don't know anything about 1955 basketball. Same goes for if you're mostly in the hall for your accolades in a European league, you know, over in Spain or Italy or wherever. I don't know anything about that game, so I'm not going to talk about it. Going alphabetically, we start off this list with Bill Bradley. Now, he didn't play the first two seasons of his career because he was over in Italy being a Rhodes Scholar for Princeton. And while that is pretty cool, you don't get inducted into the NBA Hall of Fame just for being a pretty smart guy. He never averaged above 16 points per game in his entire career. He couldn't really pass. He couldn't really rebound. He made one All-Star game throughout his whole career and won two championships with the Knicks. The accolades aren't really there and the stats aren't really there, so I don't quite understand why he's in the Hall of Fame. Someone I was really surprised to learn was in the Hall of Fame is Maurice Cheeks. Now, I always knew he was pretty good, but I didn't think he was Hall of Fame good, and when I dove into his stats, it just confirmed my priors, right? Never averaged above 15 a game, was a solid passer, averaged 6.7 assists per his career, made five All-NBA defensive teams, but only four All-Star games, one championship, Hall of pretty good, maybe? Hall of Fame? I don't think so. Here's where I start to get a little tougher on, guys. Bob Dandridge was a very solid piece on two championship teams, was a great defender, but I just don't see him being quite in the Hall of Fame. Only made four All-Star games throughout his whole career. Of course, won the two championships, but only averaged 16 throughout his career. I think he's definitely Hall of Very Good. He's just not in my Hall of Fame. When I learned Vlade Divac was in the NBA Hall of Fame, I said out loud, Wait, are you serious? I get that he was very good for a lot of Lakers and Kings teams back in the day, but this is a guy who averaged 11 points per game throughout his entire career and only made one All-Star game. He never won a chip, never made an all-defensive team, never won a defensive player of the year. I truly do not understand how in the modern era we can look at Vlade Divac's career and be like, yeah, that's a Hall of Famer, for sure. Joe Dumars is in the Bob Dandridge category of very close, but me personally, no thank you, right? He was a great defender on a lot of great Pistons teams, made all defensive teams, made all-star games. He's very, very fringe NBA Hall of Fame, but me personally, he would be just outside of mine. This one hurts, because not only do I love Manu Ginobili just as much as the next guy, but at the time of recording this, it is his birthday. So I'm sorry, Manu, but to me, you're just not a Hall of Famer. Oh, but Ben, he, he was the greatest six-man of all time. Oh, he's greatest six-man, Ben. He won one six-man of the year award, actually. So please shut up talking to me. Listen, I love Manu just as much as the next guy, but I don't think we can let guys with two all-star games into the Hall of Fame. Tim Hardaway Sr. is kind of in a league of his own where he's not quite down there with the Vlade Divox of the world, but he's not up there with the Joe Dumars' either, right? I think he was a very solid player, five All-Star games throughout his career, put up a lot of points, had a deadly crossover, but I just don't think he's quite Hall of Fame material. Hall of very good, probably, but to me, he's just not up there with the elite, elite guys. The Connie Hawkins argument, to me, is pretty easy. He only played nine seasons as a professional basketball player. Five of them were above average. Three of them were elite. But two of those came in the ABA. If he had played longer and put up better stats for longer, he'd definitely be in the Hall of Fame. But as of right now, the sample size of him being elite is far too small to justify his induction into the Hall of Fame. Dennis Johnson kind of fits right into that Tim Hardaway senior category where he was very good. He was a clamp god, made nine all-defensive teams, but only five all-star games, right? Was he very solid for a lot of Celtics and Supersonics teams? Absolutely. He won three championships, 
but I only want the best of the best in my Hall of Fame, and Dennis Johnson is not the best of the best. Bobby Jones is in that high-end Joe Dumars category where he played 11 seasons and made an all-NBA defensive team in every single one of them, which is just stupid. But just like with Dennis Johnson, his offense just never really was all there, and it's important to be well-rounded if you want to be in the NBA Hall of Fame. Yao Ming is simultaneously better than you think, but not an NBA Hall of Famer at the same time. Right, he was amazing throughout his career. Eight All-Star selections in every year of his career he made an All-Star game. Was an all-time defender, but he did only play eight seasons, and really that's the only reason he's not in my Hall of Fame. I've got a ten-season minimum on my Hall of Fame, okay? If you're not playing ten years, you're not getting in, and Yao Ming, unfortunately doesn't make the cut. Calvin Murphy is a great player, and uh, somebody Rockets fans likely remember fondly, but he only made one All-Star game in his career, and I don't really need more of an argument than that. Jack Sigma is also kind of in that high-end Joe Dumars category. He was a big, very ahead of his time, led the league in free throw percentage one year, which is just stupid, an immaculate defender, but I don't think the accolades are all there, and I don't think the scoring ever really got there for him to be considered one of the game's best ever. This player has stumped me. I cannot figure out whether or not I want him in my Hall of Fame, and I'm not ashamed to admit that. This guy has four Defensive Player of the Years. He was a block champ, he was a two-time all-rebound champ, made six defensive teams, but he never, ever averaged above 10 points per game. He never averaged double digits. That player, of course, is Ben Wallace. I'm not ashamed to admit, I have no clue what to do with Ben Wallace. Tell me in the comments if you think he's a Hall of Famer, but never above 10 points per game is astonishing to me. Even with all the defensive accolades, even with the championship, I'm just not sure. So, now that we know 13 players I would take out of the Hall of Fame, who are some current players who I think most people think should make the Hall of Fame, but I'm just not sold on yet. There's no doubt in my mind that Kyle Lowry will be in the Hall of Fame when all's said and done, but are we talking about the same Kyle Lowry, the only six-time All-Star Kyle Lowry? I don't see it with him, quite honestly. I don't know if he was ever really elite. I mean, maybe one year for that championship run with Kawhi, but I, I don't see him being looked back on as one of the NBA's greats, and I think someone... 30 years from now will be in my same position and look back at the Hall of Fame and be like, wow, who is this Kyle Lowry guy and why is he in the Hall of Fame? For me, Klay Thompson is maybe one of the most overrated players of all time. Uh, come at me in the comments if he's like your favorite player. But I, six-time All-Star Klay Thompson, again, I mean, I just don't think he's really up there with all-time greats. I think his legacy is mostly carried by Wardell Stephen Curry. Kevin Love, Jimmy Butler, and Blake Griffin are also guys I could see making it one day that I disagree with. Kevin and Blake Griffin, I just don't think were ever really elite enough for a long enough period of time to make it. And for Jimmy Butler, I don't think the winning is there for him to justify being in the Hall of Fame. That's going to be all for me today. If you did make it this far, thank you so much for watching. It really does mean the world. Leave a comment if you think I just did a terrible job. If all of your favorite players are now no longer Hall of Famers, or if you think I, I did perfect, I didn't say anything incorrect on this whole video, tell me about that too. Uh, follow us on social media on Twitter, uh, Spotify, Own Accord Pod, Own Accord Podcast, any social media you can think of, and I'm going to catch you.